First of all, shut down your Sony SmartRed 3 by swiping to the left and choosing Settings. Now at the bottom, there is a button called Power Off. Press this button and confirm. Your device is now shutting down. If it's done, press the power button and wait for the Sony logo to appear. After several seconds, you see a blue screen saying insert USB, double press. You can switch modes by pressing the power button once. You have fast boot, recovery, normal boot and factory reset. Now choose fast boot and double press to select this option. You're now successfully running in fast boot mode. If this method shouldn't work for you, just press the power button and wait for the device to freeze and then to reboot. This can take several seconds. Now, keep holding the power button until your device vibrates three times. Now, release the power button and keep holding it again until you see a Sony logo and the blue screen saying insert USB. Now again, you can choose the fast boot mode by double pressing. Now we have to connect our Sony SmartRed 3 to the PC using a micro USB cable. Do this by flipping the device and accessing the micro USB port at the bottom. You have to remove the cap in order to do that. Now grab a micro USB cable and connect the watch with your PC. Now we have to install the ADB and Fastboot drivers. Do this by downloading the official Google USB driver for Nexus devices. First of all accept and then download the driver. Now extract the driver and put it on your desktop. Now you have to open the folder and choose this file. For example, use Notepad to edit this file. Now copy the first three strings of the last device and insert them. Now rename the device to Tetra, which is the product name of the Sony SmartWorks 3. Now open your preferences and go to the device manager. Now you see a Tetra device. Right click on it and select properties. Now go to details and hardware IDs. Right click and copy. Now you have to replace the string of the old device with the new one. So select this part and replace it. Now select the other ID and replace the other part. Now select the whole thing, scroll down to the bottom and insert it there again. This is for 32 or 64 bit devices or different processors. Now you could install this by selecting the folder on your desktop and pressing next. However, on Windows 8 and Windows 10 it won't work because you can't install unsigned drivers and you've edited the file so they're not signed anymore. What you have to do now is to open the command prompt as administrator. Do this by right clicking it and pressing yes. Now enter shutdown.exe space slash r space slash o space slash f space slash t space double zero. Now enter. Your device will now reboot. Now select to fix a problem, which should be at the bottom on the left side. Now advanced options and go to start settings and restart your PC. After several seconds, you will see the screen of the motherboard and then boot settings. Now you can press F7 to allow the installation of unsigned drivers. Your device will now reboot. Now open up the control panel and select device manager. Now select Tetra, right click on it and choose update driver software and browse my computer for driver files. Select the folder and install. Click on install this driver software anyway. You have now successfully installed the ADB drivers. Now, use minimal ADB and fastboot or another program to access fastboot and ADB. Enter fastboot devices and you'll see your device connected to the PC. Now, don't unlock the bootloader. Just enter fastboot, boot, and then select the TWRP image. 
I will link this image at the bottom of this video. OK. Now you can press Enter. Your device will now boot into the TWRP recovery image. Just wait a few seconds until it appears. Now go to Mount and disable and enable MTP because sometimes your PC can't recognize your device as an ADB device. This will help you. Now go back to the main screen. Select Backup and only choose System and Boot so that you back up the system and the kernel. Deselect Data and enable Compression if you want to save some space. Now swipe to backup and wait for it to finish. This is just in case you mess something up that you have a working factory image to restore to, because you can't download it from Google or Sony and would be stuck with a brick device if you do something wrong. Now back to the PC, enter ADB devices and verify that your device is connected to the PC. Then enter ADB push and select the where supersu.zip file. Then press space, enter a slash SD card, which will put the zip file inside the virtual SD card on the device. You can also open this PC and select Smartware 3 into the storage and then drag and drop the where super SU zip file to the internal storage of your smartwatch. This will also work. Now go to install and select the where super SU zip file to be flashed. Swipe to confirm flash and wait a few seconds until it's done. Then press Reboot System and wait for the system to reboot. Your device should now be successfully rooted. You can now verify that your device is rooted by using advanced settings which will work instantly without showing you the warning message that some functions may not work because your device is not rooted. You can now, for example, go to Advanced Settings, go to Display, and disable Touch to Wake Screen. Please notice that routing will avoid your warranty, and I'm not responsible for anything you do to your device. Also, if you don't have a working factory image or backup to restore to, you're simply out of luck, because Sony and Google don't provide them anymore. So the only chance of getting it to work again is to restore a backup that you made before routing or before modifying the system, or of course you can try flashing the OTA update manually, which might not work, because the OTA update only has the changed files in it, and if you've modified something that hasn't been changed, you can't really get the file back. So please be aware of that. Also, never ever unlock the bootloader of your smartwatch, because otherwise you won't be able to install OTA updates anymore. You will be able to receive them, you will be able to flash them manually, but it won't work if you want to automatically install them. And I don't know if it was working if you revert back to stock, because no one ever did this before. Also, there is no reason for it, because TWRP is highly unstable, and if you flash it, you might experience some annoying bugs. And the best thing is just to enter files boot, boot and then TWRP because this will just work fine and the factory recovery image will still be on the device, untouched. So please never unlock the bootloader. Well, thanks for watching and please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Also, you can tell me in the comments below what you think about the Sony SmartWatch 3 or about Android Wear in general. I can also do a review if you want, so just tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching.